Hi, this is Mrs. Han. I'm going to see if I can walk you through the carbon cycle gizmo. Um, here is your uh, student exploration sheet, and here are some prior knowledge questions. Hopefully, you remember uh, photosynthesis and respiration, so you can answer these two questions. And then um, for the warm up, we're going to be using um, the website, and it says um, we're going to notice a black carbon right here in the atmosphere and um, different glowing blue areas that this carbon can then move to. So notice like this one is not blue, so we can't click on this one, but we can click on any of the blue areas um, for where the carbon can go next. So for example, hopefully you remember with photosynthesis, Plants use the carbon from the atmosphere and they use that um, to make their own food. So if I click on land plants, it will show me um, the path right here. It's going from the atmosphere to land and it's giving me a little more information of how the carbon is being used by the land plants. And if you notice, there's a couple other areas gl um, glowing blue as well. And I can go um, to another um, destination for this carbon molecule. Because remember, carbon is just moving um, through, but it's not um, being created or destroyed. It's just cycling, which is why we're calling this the carbon cycle. So... Um, so you're going to go ahead and do that. You can click on uh, land plants, then you're going to click on land animals, and then you're going to click uh, back to the atmosphere, and it will explain at each step how the carbon molecule is moving. Okay, so for activity A, we're going to go back and reset it and start back in the atmosphere. And this time you're going to go ahead and choose um, uh, a longer path for how this molecule is going to go uh, through the different, um, we call them sinks or um, systems of the earth. So we've got atmosphere, geosphere, rocky non-living part, hydrosphere, which is the, the oceans, and biosphere is all living things, including dead things, too. So you're just going to, kind of like we did above, you're just going to click on, um, from here you're going to click on one of the blue areas, and you're going to follow it through many steps. Um, so let's go to, let's go to the ocean this time. And so this is, this system right here is going to be the hydrosphere. So um, you'll go ahead and put oceanic CO2 and then the hydrosphere, and then you'll explain how it got there. Okay, so here it dissolved into the water. Um, so carbon, di uh, carbon, will, carbon dioxide will actually dissolve into the water and um, form a different compound. And then, and then you can take it to Another area, if you want to take it to marine plants and algae, um, that will be actually considered part of the biosphere because these are living things. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and do part A that way. Um, number two is just, you know, more specifically telling you next go to the hydrosphere, next go to biosphere, next go to geosphere. Um, you're going to come up with a couple more carbon paths because there's so many different places that this carbon can move and cycle around. Um, here, two ways carbon can get from a land plant to the atmosphere. So if I reset it and I go to the land plant, then I might have to do a couple more steps to get it back up to the atmosphere. So let's say from a land plant, then I go to a forest fire. And once there's a forest fire, then carbon will be released back into the atmosphere. 
So this, this is one path where carbon can go um, from a land plant back to the atmosphere. Hopefully there's other ways than just having a forest burn down, um, but you can go ahead and reset it and find another path from land plant to another, another destination to ultimately go up to the atmosphere. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and keep finding these different paths. Um, activity B is talking about how human activity can affect the carbon cycle. So here we're gonna try to find the path to form coal and petroleum. These are some fossil fuels. Natural gas is another fossil fuel. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out a way that carbon ends up as coal. So carbon, if I go to land plants, always a good guess, um, then the coal lights up, okay? So I can go from land plants, and we already know that that happens through photosynthesis, and then I'm gonna click on coal, and it's gonna show me that um, coal is created when this plant material um, becomes buried and compressed and heated over a long period of time. So here is kind of the layers forming on top of this dead plant material, and that's going to form coal. So coal makes up about 85% of fossil fuel carbon. So we're going to go ahead and say um, atmosphere to land plants to coal. And um, I think down here it says uh, fossil fuels are used in many ways. Describe the main use for each fuel. So if, I, if I'm still at coal, if you notice, when I'm on coal, this power plant lights up blue. So if I click on the power plant, it shows that coal is used in power plants to generate electricity. So most of our electricity, not most, but in um, but a good percentage of our elect electricity is used, is created by burning coal. So right here, you could um, you could write that information that it's it's um, used in power plants to generate electricity. Okay, so you're going to do the same for petroleum and natural gas. And in order to click on natural gas and find out more information, you sort of have to do the whole pathway to get to natural gas. Okay. Now we are going to, um, I think you can do that one, um, but this is methane, by the way, um, which we learned about from the land animals. Um, here in activity C, you are going to click over here for model. And this is showing um, the different carbon reservoirs. So a reservoir is just where carbon is stored. And um, this is, you can see that this amount of carbon is stored in the atmosphere, 850 gigatons. Um, this amount of carbon is stored in the ocean, which is a lot. And this amount is stored in sediments or rocks where the earth's crust. So um, we've got some in the soil, some in land plants, and some in fossil fuels. Okay, so these are all reservoirs. And these numbers are showing um, the movement of carbon uh, going from the atmosphere into land plants, 63 gigatons of carbon. Okay, so here it's talking about how in the past 250 years, we've been burning a lot of um, fossil fuels. And so we've been increasing our atmospheric carbon um, by about 40% since um, the industrial revolution. So this is when we're talking about global warming and all of these things, we're talking about the huge increase in, of carbon that we've been putting into the atmosphere due to um, burning fossil fuels. Okay, so looking at this model, we're gonna be answering these questions. 
um, what are the two major sources of atmospheric carbon. So what are the two arrows that are pointing into this direction that are, are adding carbon to the atmosphere? You can see that it's fossil fuels and soil. So as, as um, soil breaks down you know dead things it releases carbon back into the atmosphere so these are the two sources of carbon and a carbon sink is a location um, that stores carbon for a long period of time which two carbon sinks remove carbon from the atmosphere so you can see here's the atmosphere uh, atmospheric carbon so which two sources are removing carbon from the atmosphere. So we've got these two are taking carbon away from the atmosphere and these two are putting carbon back in. Um, okay, uh, so hopefully you can answer more of these questions um, as you look at this image. And then for the last question here, how much will atmospheric carbon change in one year? So, these are the settings. Um, let's see. I'm not sure where it says something about, but these are, oh, these are present day settings of how much uh, carbon is in the air, how much um, plant and fossil fuel usage, and how much our oceans are absorbing. So how much our plants are taking in, how much our fossil fuels. So these are the, the current settings. So um, in one year, we'll look and see what's going to happen to this atmospheric carbon. So here we go, one year. It, if you noticed, it increased by one gigaton. I'm going to reset it just so you can see. Oh, no, sorry, four. four. 850 to 854, OK? So then we'll, we can reset it and take a look at how much does it increase in 10 years? Okay, 850 to 890, so it went up 40 gigatons. And then you're gonna do the same for 100 years. Okay, so we're continuing, at this rate, we're continuing to increase the amount of carbon that we're putting in the atmosphere. Okay, then it talks about carbon being a greenhouse gas that traps heat. And we need some in our atmosphere, but too much is going to warm the planet. Okay, so let's answer those questions. Um, oh, so let's take a look at this one. What fossil fuel usage will result in no change in atmospheric CO2 each year? So we know that when we're burning these fossil fuels, it's going to continue to increase our CO2 um, in the atmosphere. So how much fossil fuel use can we um, can can we still use, but it's not going to increase our atmospheric carbon dioxide? So if we use nine, we already know that nine is going to cause it to increase. So let's go ahead and increase one year. Yep. Okay. Um, how about if we use eight or seven? We'll say seven. Let's see if seven still brings it up. Yes. Okay. Let's see if five. Okay, so five. Did I reset everything? Yes. At one year. Oh. So at five, let me try six just to make sure. Six. Oh, six increases it. So if we reduce our fossil fuel usage to five gigatons per year, then our CO2 um, in the atmosphere will actually be uh, stable, will not change, will not increase. Okay. So what percent is this? So you'll have to, originally it was nine and then it went down to five. So you need to just figure out um, what that percentage is to go from nine to five. So that would be four. Four is what percent of nine, and that will be a percent. So how much do we need to decrease our fossil fuel usage to achieve this goal? Um, and then you're going to be looking at these questions too. How does increasing biomass affect atmospheric CO2? 
So if we increase biomass, let me if we increase biomass, and we go one year. Ooh. So the more plants we have, do you see the CO2 is going down? Okay. Because uh, plants are going to take in more CO2. So they're, they'll absorb more CO2 out of the atmosphere. Plants are kind of like big sponges. Okay, so for each question, go ahead and just reset everything so that you can answer it based on only what the question is asking. All right. If you have any other questions, um, let me know. Let me see. For this last one, um, if we if we stop burning fossil fuels, how many years would it take to return to levels that the CO2 levels from the year 1800 when it was 600 gigatons? So right now we're at 850. It's asking how many how many years will it take to get to 600 if we completely stop? So you'll have to go to zero, and let's see how many years it takes to um, get to 600. So let's say we do 10 years, we just went down um, 50. So you can do, you can just kind of go by tens until it gets to 600 and that will tell you how many years it will take us to go back to our pre-industrial revolution um, CO2 levels. And that's, um, using no fossil fuels, no burning of fossil fuels. So uh, hopefully um, this all makes sense to you and, um, and hopefully we can take some of this information and apply it to our own society so that we can preserve our world for future generations.